Good afternoon and welcome to the CMC Markets live non-farm payrolls webinar event. My name is David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 7th of February 2020 uh, and the time has just gone 13.15 GMT. Uh, and before we get into the actual webinar itself, we're going to have to go through uh, the risk warnings. Uh, for those of you who attend our webinars and our events uh, or even our seminars um, fairly regularly, you know this is all standard practice. What you must do is keep, uh, show the risk warnings as a part of the, the, um, the event. Essentially, it states whatever I cover in today's event um, is, is not, should not be construed as explicit uh, trading advice or investment advice. Um, it's a very straightforward. Just have a read through those. Uh, and then what, what we'll do is we'll be coming on to the webinar properly uh, in a second. I'll take a look at what's been going on in the markets and also what to look out for with the actual report itself. And I say this all the time, and I really do mean it. Um, if this is an interactive event, so please feel free to uh, chip in your thoughts, your views, and your opinions, so on and so forth. Um, so first things first, if you take a look at what's been go going on uh, in, in, in equity markets, it's been fairly quiet. I'm sorry, it's been it's been fairly um, it's been fairly negative in that. Today's session has been negative, first kind of negative session of, of this week. This here is the FTSE 100. Um, I'll just talk about how we've seen basically a decent rebound all week, except for today. Um, but then again, if you had, say, four, four straight days of gains, you come into non farm payrolls, it wouldn't be a massive surprise to have a bit of a pullback. So we can see here a very aggressive sell off this day last week. The market popped higher here. Uh, it pulled back a good chunk of the ground that was given up. And now we're right back below the 50 moving average. So if, depending on how the numbers shape up, uh, we, could, we could be looking at a scenario whereby the markets um, look to continue the recent kind of push to the upside. And if we go further higher on the uh, FTSE 100, we could be looking heading up towards 7,600. And we'll move beyond that, could take us up towards the January highs. It's only, and it's only really if you go back below the 200 moving average, this red line here, because then we begin to, begin to get a bit worried and think to ourselves, you know what, maybe the kind of the wider upward trend, um, maybe the more recent negative, tr the, the trend of the last two weeks uh, is, very, is, is going to come back into play. And we could be looking at retesting the lows uh, of February, that we, sorry, the lows that we saw in January. Uh, I'll take a, a quick run through of stuff, the, the few big indices, a few big currency pairs. I'll talk about what we're looking at in terms of expectations of the US numbers and not to mention the Canadian number as well. Uh, Canada often gets um, can often get forgotten about uh, in in all, in all this. Uh, so taking a look here, um, this is the German market. You know, keep in mind the German market hit an all-time high in late January, and look at where we got yesterday, and look at that, look at that today's highs. So it really sums up how strong sentiment is if we're very close, if we're not too far away from record highs uh, in Germany. So you know what we had this week was. Chinese markets reopened. With that, we had the PBOC, the People's Bank of China, injecting liquidity. Chinese regulators turned around, and what they, what they did was put in uh, restrictions on short selling. What they also did was put in restrictions on fund managers offloading their positions. And then a few days ago, uh, what we in the last couple of days, we've had the Chinese government coming out saying they've got to cut tariffs on $75 billion worth of U.S. goods. All this has been designed to remove the fear from the financial markets. We've seen moves higher in Asia, we've seen moves higher here in Europe and in the US. It's, um, unfortunately, the health crisis is getting worse. But what we're seeing in the markets is that equities, particularly say in this case German, are not too far away from record highs. So we press on higher from here, we could be retesting the highs of late January in around 13,640. I'll be covering big indices, big currency pairs. Uh, so please feel free to stick your um, Opinions and uh, market requests in the uh, in the box. If we do drift lower on the DAX, we could be looking heading back towards 13,400, or perhaps this blue line here, the 50 moving average, um, which is just just south of 13,300. What I'll do now is I come on to the S&P 500 and see how things are shaping up on that front. It was only yesterday the S&P 500 hit an all-time high, which you know I think is, to be honest, it's a it's a bit it's a it's a it's a bit surreal. Whereby you have this deepening health crisis, yet the S&P 500 is going out hitting another all-time high. So it really tells you a lot about the sentiment. Um, 
So we're pressing higher. We're, we're currently trading. We're expecting you know, the cash market to open around 3,336. If we press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting, uh, retesting the highs of yesterday. We could be looking heading towards 3,360, 70, so on and so forth. Any move to the downside, we could find some support in around this area here, 3,300. A lot of consolidation in that zone. And even if you drop below that, look, look how the 50-day moving average, this blue line here, acts as support nicely uh, this day last week. So that re that metric that that um, that that could uh, act as support yet again. I'll take a look at the uh, the Nikkei 225, and I'll be talking about the currency pairs. So on the um, on the Nikkei 225, what we're looking at, where is it now? Similar scenario to um, the, the DAX and the SP 500, whereby the market uh, in this week mostly pulled back. The, uh, the, the losses that incurred. It was quite sizable losses that, that it had, but they were mo nearly all nearly all pulled back. So if you take a look here, you know we could see here quite decent highs. Set. If you look at the highs of December, the highs of January, and where we where we were yesterday and even today, where we were just we're currently trading in the case currently in around twenty three thousand eight hundred. You know if we kind of press on higher from here, we could be looking at heading towards twenty four thousand. 24,100 will be the uh, there there about the January high, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading heading approaching 24,200. Uh, it's only really if you move below that uh, back towards this blue line here, the 50-day moving average potentially the correct support in around 23,622, and a move below below that could take us back towards uh, this yellow line here, the 40-day moving average, which sort of coincides with the kind of 23,000 mark, maybe kind of 23,086. Uh, I've had no requests so far in relation to um, markets to look at, so if, if, you, if you are content to listen to me talk, I'll just keep talking. Now take a look at Euro Dollar now. Euro Dollar has, in the last few, few sessions has been a, a, a lovely example of a downward trend. Uh, we've, had, we've had a few lower lows and a few lower highs. So the market has been a move, moving aggressively lower. We're back below the 110 mark. You know, depending on how the numbers come in, we could, you know, obviously, by and large, if there's a strong, if there's a strong report, we could take a step back down towards the, the, the lows that were achieved in early October in at one spot zero, below 109, one spot zero eight seventy nine. Uh, any kind of move to the upside could incur resistance in around one spot ten, but we'd really need to be getting back above this, say, potentially this, possibly this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, uh, in around kind of 111, or even the the red line here, the trending moving average, which comes into play in at one spot 1124, before we kind of begin to think, you know what, maybe, maybe the um, the downward trend has then come to an end if we're looking to get back above these metrics. But while we, re we remain below 110, it's likely we could see further losses on euro dollar. I'll take a look at pound versus the US dollar. For me, the area to keep an eye on for the sterling sterling dollar is one spot twenty nine. Uh, basically, the pound had a great jolt higher to the upside on the back of the uh, the Conservative Party winning the UK general election, but since then it's given up a lot of those gains. So you can see here the price action has been a bit has, has been tapering off the last few sessions. We're still above the one one spot twenty nine metric. If we can hold above it, we could look heading back towards this blue line, the fifty moving average in a one spot thirty. 72. Notice how it recently acted as resistance and support recently, so it could be an important metric in the future. A move beyond that could take us up towards 1 spot 32, and a move beyond that could up up take us up towards 1 spot 32.84. Conversely, a strong, US, a strong job support from the US could take us back below 1 spot 29, and if you go below that, we could be looking at targeting the lows of early November in around 1 spot 22.7, 1 spot 27.68. The, uh, the non-farm payroll numbers are coming out. Aussie dollar, I, I will come on to that in a second. I want to now talk about dollar CAD um, because the Canadian jobs report are coming out as well. And the dollar has been doing very well against the Canadian dollar. Why? Because the, the oil market's been hammered. Uh, China is the biggest energy importer in the world. All the fears that China, uh, the, their, their demand and their economy is going to slow because of the health crisis has really put a major negative impact on the, on, on the oil market. And with that, we've seen major move to the upside in the dollar CAD. So we've hit levels last you know last in, in November 
2019. We're in a strong upward trend here. If you press on higher from here, if we have a, if you, we could have a good combination. We could have a strong US dollar and a weak CAD, Canadian job support, which would be a double whammy for the dollar CAD, which could take us on par, on par to the November highs. And then beyond that, it could set us up towards one spot 3374. I'll just enhance the uh, the chart there for you. One spot 33. Apologies. One spot 33.47 will be the highs of um of um of October 2019. Conversely, if the number if the numbers are are are, are just as impressive, and head back toward this red line here, the 200 moving average, it could take us into one spot 32.27, or perhaps this trend line here, which comes into play in around one spot 32. Now, I'll quickly t take a look at what's going on in relation to what to expect. We've gone through a, 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 a good number of markets. What to expect? The, mar the, uh, the, market, um, an the market calendar can be found under news analysis, third option down. So in terms of what we're expecting, I hope everyone can see this okay. In terms of the actual payroll figures itself, we're expecting 160,000 jobs to have been added in January. That'll be an improvement on the 145,000 jobs that were added in December. In relation to the to the unemployment rate, the jobless rate is or unemployment rate is tipped to hold steady at 3.5%, which is a joint 50-year low. On the earnings front, which I'm keeping a close eye on, U.S. earnings are supposed to increase from 2.9% to 3%. There are the U.S. numbers. I'll take a quick look at the job, Canadians' job support. They're going to be out in three, num three minutes' time, people. Um, the Canadian unemployment rate is tipped to hold steady at 5.6%. Uh, the employment change uh, is expect expected to be, it shows here a ne re negative reading um, of 15,000. Uh, the finer details will come out when, um, when, when, all, when all the details are out. We'll have the breakdown of what the figure was itself and also what the actual, um, is it full-time jobs, part-time jobs? On the uh, on the Canadian front, um, obviously it's preferable to have more full-time jobs than part-time jobs. But then again, an increase in jobs, nonetheless, will be will be well received. You know, keep in mind earlier in the week we had decent U.S. Um, job, initial job claims that fell to 202,000, and then whereas on Wednesday we had a very strong U.S. ADP number it came in at 291,000, absolutely stellar number, uh, a multi-year high in terms of the, the strength of the U.S. jobs market. But this is all lovely to talk about, but there isn't necessarily a particularly strong, um, strong uh, correlation between what's going on with all those individual ports. You, know, you can have a very strong ADP, US jobless claims, and still have a weak headline, non farm perils, and vice versa. I, I quickly take a look at Aussie dollar, it's an old individual requested for that. Um, the ASX 200, I'll have a look at that in hopefully a second. I haven't looked at ASX 200, the Aussie, the Australian stock market, um, for a bit, but for a couple of sessions. But the last, the last one I've been seeing is it's been broad, broad recovery has been the name of the game. It's in a strong downward trend. The, the American dollar is doing quite well. The Australians under pressure because of it was connections to China. So you can see that there's a strong downward pressure here. Notice how we're not too far away from the lows of October. So this zone here is essentially a bit of a support zone. So we we, we break much further. In the lows that were achieved in early October, we could be looking heading back towards zero spot six to six. Any move to the upside in Aussie dollar, we really need to be heading, heading, taking off these highs here, in around, um, uh, in around this level here at zero spot six to seven seventy. Numbers are coming off very quickly. Moves to the up, head up towards zero spot sixty eight. Just want to um, see what's going on in terms of where the numbers are coming out. The numbers are coming out in about ten seconds time, folks. So I really need to focus on that. I'll happily answer further questions and comments when the numbers come out. But it, okay, folks, I'm, I'll be quiet now. Five seconds. Right, the numbers are out. We're starting to, starting to kind of populate now. A very strong headline number. Uh, what we're seeing here 
is 225,000 jobs are added. It's a very, very respectable number. U.S. economists have often said any if they're adding more than 200,000 jobs per month, that will keep the U.S. economy going. It's well above the 160,000 jobs that we're expecting in the previous month, and it's a decent. Oh, sorry, it's well. It was well above the expectation of 160, and it's a decent improvement on the 145. Uh, on top of that, if you take a look at the earnings component, uh, an, an area that I think is very important, it increased from 2.9% to 3.1% above the 3% expectation. Taking a look at the unemployment rate, that's not ideal. It, it ticked slightly higher uh, off of the 50-year low from 3.5% to 3.6%. Overall, I would suggest this is, po this is, this is dollar positive. Uh, I would say this is a good job to port, uh, and this, sh sh in my view, should uh, should put upward pressure on the US dollar. Um, if you take a look at what went on over in Canada, we can see on the Canadian front that the, um, the employment change was positive. Uh, 34,500 jobs were, were created, better than expected. Uh, on top of that, in relation to the Canadian employment rate, it managed to move down from 5.6% to 5.5%. I would suggest that this is fairly positive for the Canadian side of things. Um, so we've, we've got a fairly strong US job support. We've also got a fairly strong Canadian job support. So we might, if anything, dare I say it, before I look at it, I might say we could see a bit of a move to the downside in dollar CAD. Uh, I'll have a, have a look now at dollar CAD and see what's been going on. See what the initial reaction is. Just seem to be a bit slow there in terms of the uh, the, the, the charts opening up uh, and what have you. Seems to be a bit of a, a slow day for the server. I do apologize for that. But I would suggest that this is by and large a positive number. Uh, to be fair, a, a marginal increase of you know, 0.1% rise up in the employment rate in the US, I wouldn't have thought that is anything to be you know over overly concerned about. It's just off, it's, it's moved slightly above if you know, just it's just ticked up slightly from a 50 year high. A strong headline figure. It's a decent number. It's a big improvement on the on the previous month's number. Better, than, much better than expected. And what I really like about this with jobs, U.S. jobs report, is the earnings component. Earnings increased by up to 3.1 percent. Essentially, when Americans are in more job, when Americans are earning more, they tend to spend more. Uh, so with that, like I said here, we're seeing a bit of a move to the downside in dollar CAD. Um, what we're seeing on, on the back of that, like I said, given how positive the run between the US dollar and the Canadian, against the Canadian dollar has been in recent sessions, uh, I think we'll probably see a bit of a, there we go, I said I said by and large it was going to be probably dollar CAD negative and it has pulled back a bit. Uh, I'll take a look at a, at, a, at a shorter time frame. I think we could see a bit of moving the downside in dollar CAD. I think the upper trend is still very much intact. I think the US jobs, jobs market is in, is in decent shape, and the US economy is probably in better shape than the Canadian economy. But I think in the near term, we could look to head back towards potentially down around this zone here, down around one spot, uh, one spot 3260. Uh, any kind of further moves? I'll take a look now at the DAX uh, in one second. So we could look heading back towards one spot 3260 and dollar, and dollar CAD, or potentially at one spot 3240. Like I said, folks, this is a interactive webinar, so please feel free to shout out in relation to uh, any requests you have. I would suggest that this job support is, is by and large positive for stock markets. US economy is in, is in better shape. The US Federal Reserve, the central bank of the US, last year cut rates three times. They've made it pretty clear that they're not particularly keen, um, they're, they're quite keen rather, to sit, on, sit in their hands. I would suggest that they're not you know this is a good job support but i wouldn't have thought that this is going to have much of an influence uh on um on the jobs and on their and the, on their thinking in terms of they'll probably go if this is a, this is a good job support we're, we're content with the earnings component the labor market is robust but i don't think it's going to be and you know they're going to be running off hiking rates anytime soon especially in light of what's going on with the health crisis in china uh i know it's going around the world but it's predominantly in china uh i i, I would suspect that they would uh want to see to find out what the kind of true kind of cost uh, of the of that situation have been yes i would definitely come to the um uh, the um 
the Australian market next. We can take a look here. So we saw obviously a jolt to the upside when the numbers came out. Then we saw a bit of a move to the downside. I still this was the very much initial reaction to the uh, to the report. You can often get that whereby there's a kind of volatility in around it. You know, essentially the lows of the session or the cash trading session um, has been here in in around on the DAX thirteen thousand three four hundred and seventy three. If you can hold above that metric, I think you know we could see further gains being made. I'm not entirely, you know, I think it's a fairly good job to pull. So, I, so I think it's, it should be um, positive for stock markets. It's it's that, that kind of fine balance of it's good enough to add to bullish sentiment, but it's probably not so good. But all of a sudden, it will actually alter the Federal Reserve's thinking in relation to what should we be doing? Should we be looking to hiking rates? I really don't, don't think it was it, it was that good. Uh, I would probably give the report overall. Uh, either kind of an A minus, maybe a B plus in that zone. So keep in mind, we've come a long, long way in the last few sessions because of the strength of the uh, the rebound. So even if you do look to drift a bit further lower on the on the DAX here, I think we could see some support come into play in around 13,400 or potentially in around this zone here, uh, north just north of 13,200. You know, obviously the last few days buying on the dip. Has been quite a popular strategy, so I think we, we could potentially see more of that because this was, you know, we, we're, we're, we appear to be um, ending the week on a negative note, but overall it's been a, a very strong week. And like I said, on the DAX, we're not too far away from its all time high. Now, if I take a look now at what's going on with the Australian market, the ASX 200, or as you call it on our platform, the Australia 200. Any questions? Uh, we've got about seven or eight minutes left on this live live uh, webinar. Any questions you have, feel free to just shout them out. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of run through some of the markets again. Euro dollar, cable, and the likes. What I find interesting about the, um, the Australia 200 was that we've had a decent rebound here, which is obviously positive, and a gap created to the upside will suggest that momentum is, is to the upside. But we couldn't really get above this area here in around um, 7,053, that, 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 that zone. Um, we can see here that, that this area acted as support when the market, when the market was, 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 uh, was quite strong. Since then, we, we've actually kind of failed to, to get back above us. So I'm a bit concerned about that. I would say that overall, I'll say I'm reasonably optimistic. But... If you get back above that metric, I'd then, be, I'd then be more confident we can look to retest the highs that were achieved um, in the kind of you know latest January. But even still, you know, even if you drift a bit lower from here and go, you know, lower, move lower from down here, we we'll still take us down towards the psychologically important 7,000. And even if you go below that, this so this area here, uh, in around 6,960, uh, there thereabouts, acted as support on a few occasions. And to be honest. While we hold above these lows here, the lows uh, that were achieved on the very end, you know, this day last week, at uh, the very end of January, if you can hold above those those levels, I think we still got room. Uh, we, we still have, have a chance of retesting the, uh, the January highs. You know, it's, this is why I like technical analysis. You know, notice how the highs here of, of December, are, of early December, are fairly similar to the highs that were seen in mid December. We saw consolidation in that zone in early January, and then we find support in that zone. Um, in around 6,900, there thereabouts in early February. So I would I would suggest that that's probably the most important metric to um to look at. I can absolutely have a look at gold. Well, we have another six or seven minutes left on this webinar, so please don't be shy. Feel free to just fire away. In terms of uh, price action, I would suggest that this update is a bit on the negative side for gold. Um, I would I would think that between the headline number being well over two hundred thousand, a decent earnings component as well, I would say that this is would put a bit of pressure on the on the uh, on the gold market. While I'm uh, while I'm just waiting for the for the for, uh, for gold chart to load up, are there any other markets anybody else would like to talk about the France forty? 
take a look at what's going on over in France. So goals, um, I've seen a lot of volatility recently. Um, basically, when this day last week, when when uh, equities, or sorry, at the beginning of this day last week here, this Friday, and then going into the early hours of Monday, uh, traders were obviously very fearful of the of the of the health situation in China. Then we saw a large move to the downside uh, after after we had the update, after kind of a bit of a turnaround in sentiment because of the um, the various different interventions from uh, from the Chinese authorities. So the market is still moving to the upside. I would have thought on a daily basis that is this would be slightly negative for the um, the report for the US dollar. But you know while we hold above this area here, the lows that were achieved in mid January in around. 1536. While we hold above those met, above those lows, I think we could see further gains to be made, and we could look at heading up towards back towards 1590. If we go beyond that, we kind of psychologically important. Um, psychologically important. 1600 and beyond that, look towards the January highs. I'll take a look now. At the France, I'll take a look at the France 40, the S&P 500, and then and also dollar yen. Just wait now for the uh, so dollar yen has had a very good run recently. It's kind of heading up towards the kind of you know the 110 area. Uh, it's been pushing higher. Basically, this week has been a very much a risk on week. So so uh, assets or such as the Japanese yen, which is usually deemed to be deemed to be low risk, they have had uh, quite quite a quite a negative run. So we're seeing oh so we're seeing higher. Um, I'll come on the dollar yen in a second. What we're seeing here on the uh, on the the France 40, we can see that this particular week we have gained most of the uh, we've regained a lot of the ground that was lost lost last week. We're comfortably above the 50-day moving average, this blue line here. While we hold above that metric, and also while we hold above this kind of psychologically important 6,000, I think we could see further gains to be made, and we could be looking to head up towards kind of 6,100 there thereabouts, or the highest that we saw in mid January. You know, even if you drop below 6,000. 50 moving average acted as nice support here and resistance here. So it's, that metric has been important recently, therefore makes it more likely it will be important in the future. But obviously there are no guarantees. Uh, and it's only really if I have a decent move below that, we could be heading back towards, towards potentially 5,900. I would only be re really worried about, about the, um, the CAC, the, the, the France 40, if you take off the lows of early, of, uh, of basically Monday of, of, uh, of last Friday. Shall I, I take a look at the S and P? Should it be the S and P 500 or the Dow Jones? You you'd like to look at? I'll take a look. Uh, I start off with the S and P 500, and if you want to have a look at the Dow, <laughs> well, I I come on there down a second. My guess is that the 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 movement on both markets will, will be fairly similar. Just waiting now for the uh, for the charts to upload. So keep in mind, we've had a few days in a row of, of uh, well, yesterday we, we had a few days in a row of gains. Yesterday we had a uh, we had a record high, a record close on the on the S and P 500. So, so the sentiment is clearly very 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 strong. It's uh, so uh, you know a, a jobs report like this, I would say, would be good enough to to warrant um, you know bullish sentiment in the U S economy. But at the same time, I don't think it's going to be changing the Fed's attitude to uh, to hike in rates any, anytime soon. You know, the last time we, you know, we, we it wasn't even that long ago they cut for the third time in 2019. So it's almost as if you know they can't cut at least until you know if they wanted to cut, they probably couldn't even until about June, uh, you know, next year because it, you know it, it would be President Trump may not agree with this, but it wouldn't exactly be be be, be, be very prudent. To do several cuts uh, in a in a fairly short space of time. It just seems a bit odd how um. It just seems odd how um. I've got no chart data available on that. 
what I'll do is I'll take a look now on the, the Dow Jones and open it and then we we'll take a look back at the um at the S&P. Don't worry, um, dollar yen. I haven't uh, I haven't forgotten forgotten about that. Forgotten about you. Coming on to that in a second. Platinum. Yep, I'll happily take a look at platinum as well. Once the once the, uh, the the charts get opened, I'll happily um, I'll happily um, take a look at this. Yeah, like like I said, folks, I think it's overall it's a fairly good job support, but um, uh, it's a fairly good job support. I think it should be it should warrant um, positive sentiment for the U.S. economy, but I but I don't think it's um, I don't think it's enough to kind of jolt the Federal Reserve into look to hiking rates. So I don't think we're going to have any kind of interest rate hikes um, anytime soon from the Federal Reserve. Um, it just seems a bit unusual uh, that we're having such problems. With I do apologize for this, folks, in relation to the um, in relation to the charts. Don't worry, I will take a look at a dollar yen. I haven't forgotten about uh, the Dow Jones or Platinum. Um, it's just a case of for some strange reason, um, for some strange reason we're having some kind of issues. I think it's basically to do with uh, the, you know, the Wi-Fi in the entire building is just been a bit slow. It wasn't great this morning uh, at, at the first thing in the morning, and now it just disappears. It's got a bit slower, and then of course with that, we just appear to have kind of issues at loading the charts. Uh, like I was saying, I would have thought that this this, this job support would be overall dollar positive. Um, dollar, the dollar has been gaining decent ground versus the Japanese yen in the last week or so, or the last couple of or the last few sessions. Um, and th so with that, uh, I do I do think we're going to see uh, we're going to see kind of further gains on the uh, on the dollar versus the um, the Japanese yen. I will look to have a look at platinum, folks. I I am really sorry about this. Um, I know it's you, you tune in for a live webinar to to, uh, to see the price action. Um, one of my colleagues is just getting. Is, 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 ah, here we go. Don't worry. Um, the dollar yen is also on the list. So platinum. I did a video yesterday. If you ever if you ever tune into our um. YouTube channel and also some insights. I did a video yesterday on Palladium where I referenced Platinum. And we can see here, and I know from the top of my head, because I did it yesterday, Platinum, Palladium, sorry, apologies, Platinum, what we're looking at here, hit nearly a three year high yeah, in January. It's at a decent, a fairly decent uh, pullback. It got nice support from the 50 day moving average, and that comes into play in around 954. If you can hold above that metric, I think we, the wider upper trend could continue. And we could be looking at retesting uh, up towards the kind of psychologically important 1,000. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting the highs that we saw in uh, in, in January. Conversely, a decent break below the 50 moving average, and also the, which comes into play in around 954, could take us back towards the lows of, of mid-January in at 945. And if we do have a decent break below this area here at 945, it could take us back to this level, the 100-day moving average in at 929. Notice how there, thereabouts, we saw some consolidation, we saw some support come into play from the metric in the past. As they always say, if the metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it will be of importance in the future. But obviously, there are kind of no, there are no kind of guarantees with that. I would look to do. The, the Dow Jones and the, the dollar yen, and then look to wrap things up. Just be there. It's um, we've got a few minutes overboard, but not, not to worry. 
So the Dow Jones, we can see here the Dow Jones had a, had a very impressive week this week in terms of the pullback. All the losses of last week very much recouped. Record highs set yesterday, record close set last night in New York. We're a bit lower on, to, on today's session. Even you know, even if we do put a pullback, support could, could be found in around the kind of psychologically born 29,000 mark. And even if you go below that, we could be likely headed to this zone here, 28,930 down to 28,800. This zone here, there, 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 thereabouts in that, in that area. And then of course, if we look to push on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the highs of the highs of yesterday. And then beyond that, we could be looking towards 29,600, 700, and so on and so forth. And finally, what I'm going to look at now before I wrap things up is the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. Once again, I do apologize for the um, like a slow broadband and in turn, the slow, um, the slow loading of the charts. Similar to stock markets, the um, the dollar yen had a pretty had a pretty terrible end to the month of January. It moved aggressively lower, but conversely, it's had quite a good February. Uh, dollar yen pushing to the upside. Fair enough, it's a bit lower on today's session, but then again, you're not a shock if you have one, two, three, four days of decent gains. Uh, if you look to kind of press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 110. If we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the mid-January high of 110, spot 29. And if we go beyond that, we could be heading up towards 110, spot 67. Uh, I know we'd have to better ground today. I would have thought that today's report is, is dollar positive. Uh, so if you push on lower from here, we could be, even if you have a sizable correction, we could be looking heading back towards this blue line here, the 50 moving average in at 109 spot 25. Uh, I do appreciate um, you, you bearing with me today. Uh, I'd like to thank you for signing up to our webinar. Uh, it's going to be available on our YouTube channel. It's also going to be uploaded to the insights section of our website. Uh, I'll show you that in just one second. Um, under the news and analysis section, uh, it, it is the second tab down, I believe. So insights, and we can see it listed uh, along here on this sidebar here. So this, this um, for those of you who've tuned into the live event, this is going to appear on our trading platform later on. I would like to thank you um, for tuning in to today's trading webinar. Uh, please, um, have, please feel free to sign up for next month's webinar, and have a good trading week and good luck.